for joining. Dad, I can't breathe. Okay, wait, I'm trying to hear y'all. Can you hear Hold on. Can you hear us okay? There we there we go. No problem. Awesome. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. I'm so excited. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. This is like an honor. This is an honor. Hello. Hi. You look amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You always look amazing. I love that you I mean, I feel like we're the same. You like to change a lot. You like to change your look a lot. Yeah. I like, I like that. You're very, da you're very daring. So, so how are y'all doing during this pandemic? Making it through, you know. Um, trying to make sure that we take care of everything we got to take care of, keep the business going, but at the same time, stay, stay smart, respect. Uh, everybody else's right to not be sick by mm -hmm. by quarantining as much well self-isolating as much as possible and all that yeah how about you how are you how are you holding up i'm doing i'm doing well i know that i'm blessed doing better than other people you know there's a lot of people suffering right now and, um, uh, i i'm i'm doing i'm comfortable you know, and there's people out there that are not comfortable. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. So, you know, I still have a job. You know, I'm just glad that just like y'all are on the digital realm, that I was already on the digital realm too, because that really helped just rolling right into being on camera all the time and making more content, having more time to make content. You know, if you always if you see me looking that way, because I'm looking at y'all and the camera back and forth. <laughs> but I, I'm, it, I feel like it, it was a blessing, and and there's a lot of you know, there's so many pros and cons with this pandemic right mm -hmm. now. I feel like y'all y'all you know y'all didn't stop going, y'all just kept moving. Um, I'm so glad that it looked that way. So. <laughs> Didn't feel that way, right? <laughs> I mean, and, and the, you know, the pandemic is, is one thing, but we're also, you know, facing this um, pandemic of racism, right? So like, there's there's a lot of crises that are happening in in our world right now. It's almost hard to, to separate the two anymore. It just feels like we're in some troubling times. Oh, yes, yeah. for sure. I feel like there's there's a, a there's a lot of negative and there's a lot of positive going on at, at the same time and it's very scary right now. I feel that it just keeps getting scarier and scarier and scarier. And I feel in the art like y'all produce art and as to me that's a stress reliever. That's a stress reliever for this time. Like it's a focus away from from the bullshit. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that way, I feel like y'all rolled with the pandemic, like y'all figured out, you know, with the disappointments that were coming, how to continue on to, to still moving up. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging. So, that's, you know, that's, that's a wonderful thing. I see, I see y'all as, um, you know, y'all are pioneers. And, and I think that's that's a great thing. So, you know, not only just being, you, you know, being part of the black community, you, it, it's, it's taboo. And you're, you're like opening a flower. You're opening, you're opening light and flower, you know, to everybody like, this is, this is what it could be. This is what you could be, you could be anything you wanna be. And, you and I, I, I like that. And that's why I, I really, really look up to y'all as in just being yourself. 
And I feel that people have a, a hard time doing that. And, you know, you're, you've learned in your own life how to do that. And you keep learning, you keep growing. And, and that inspires a lot of people. That's what it is. Thank you very much. Tell, tell everybody who you are as in like your background separately, you know, because y'all were separate people before y'all got together. And we still are now, contrary. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, before y'all met. Before I, you. Um, I'm Jasmine. I am uh, one half owner of Jet Setting Jasmine Entertainment and Education Company, as well as half owner of Royal Fetish Films. I am a licensed clinical therapist. I'm the owner and lead therapist of Blue Pearl Therapy. And my background is um, I, you know, was in the um, therapy mental health space uh, prior to getting into the adult space. I kind of dabbled just a little bit through throughout my early um, early ends of my career, and then decided that I wanted to explore my own sex and sexuality. But like any good sex worker at heart, I wanted to monetize it. So um, I <laughs> was hosting parties and. Um, selling sex toys and doing pole tricks and all kinds of fun stuff like that. But one of the things that kept coming up quite often was um, women trying to answer questions about men by asking women. And <laughs> we were missing the mark, right? So, <laughs> that just doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> and, and so there was a solution to that, which I'll share, or King will share what that solution was. Um, and then the second part was in hosting these parties around uh, that were supposed to be like fun, sexy, novelty type parties. They were really turning into some pretty deep, deep issues of people's sexual hangups and traumas that, that they've experienced. And it was um, definitely uh, the parties I was hosting was for predominantly black and brown women and our concerns and challenges around sex and sexuality were so similar across the board um, as well as some challenges with enjoying sex entertainment because of lack of representation. So um, at that where I kind of felt like that area of my life in, in terms of the sex parties and coaching women was starting to come to a head like they needed more. Um, and so then I happened to meet Mr. Moore over here. <laughs> the other side of the coin. Yeah, my name is King Noir of the other half of Royal Fetish Films and Jet Setting Jasmine LLC. Also Royal Fetish Music, you know, mm -hmm. records, whatever. You know, we, <laughs> we make music and all that as well. And that's actually where uh, my background is in hip hop. I've been writing music and putting out music for for a while under my under my other name, or my name, San Salam. And, you know, toured the country, but started off actually uh, when I was 18 years old in sex work, uh, I did films, uh, magazines, online, uh, in-person sessioning, all kinds of stuff. Uh, left for a little while because my, my other passion is, you know, trying to make this world a better place through activism. So, you know, I, I've done everything you can imagine in activism as well, from teaching to traveling, building schools, uh, working with uh, people from everywhere, from Palestine to Guinea-Bissau to all over the United States. And around that same time, I got laid off from one of those good uh, good jobs working with the youth. And I had a friend who said that she needed a male dancer for a party. So I started working with her. And at the time, I came up with my company, which is Central on the Wall. And this all was dedicated to creating a space for women to be able to enjoy sexuality, entertainment, and things like that. You know, things that when men get to do with us all, boys will be boys and guys get to have all the fun, but women would be judged, judged for it. So I came up with Sensual in the Wall and, you know, stripping, erotic touch massages, BDSM, and all kinds of other over-the-top sexual entertainment. 
And around that same time, I met Jasmine and we started, we, we realized that if we put our skills and talents together, we'd go places. <laughs> so we've been a few places since then and we came up with fantasy flight parties, uh, kinky pop-up events, royal fetish films, mm -hmm. and we still do a lot of activism. Yeah. We do a whole lot of sex work. We made some human. We made some babies, you know? <laughs> yeah. I saw that beautiful baby. <laughs> um, Y'all like meet. Uh, I, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Uh, listening, listening to y'all. Go ahead, go ahead, and I'll come back to it. So yeah, that's that is how we um, forged. We took our, our both of our backgrounds and skill sets and created um, what you know what has us here tonight. Three award winning. Three-time award-winning uh, fetish films for projects that we've both uh, directed, written, shot. You know, um, so you know, it's it. A lot of people told us that you know people don't want to see black folk in kinky fetish films or romantic films, romantic films, <laughs> or portrayed in any kind of way besides the stereotypes they were used to seeing mm -hmm. black people in, in in porn so we created our own just like every single thing else you know um black folk we definitely know how to make that lemonade out of lemon situation work mm -hmm. far and far beyond so you know it's the same kind of thing in the situation we're in now you know like we're finding new ways to get our art to people we're finding new ways to be active and combat systemic racism and we're finding new ways to help people take care of their health in the time of a pandemic. What are y'all, What are do y'all have any projects in the works that are new because of the pandemic and because of the racist stuff that's going on uh, politically or in the streets? Do y'all have new projects that stem from it that were just like, whoa? So we, um, we are, um, collective members of the BIPOC AIC, so that is Black Indigenous People of Color Adult Industry Collective. And um, King and I are, are both chairs of two committees, which that was formed out of the most recent uprising. And um, it's hard to say that it's like a new project because I think all of the, um, both King and I and, and Cinnamon Love, who is the founder of the BIPOC um, Collective, have been working on decolonizing sex and sexuality in our own ways for many, you know, for many years, um, and really wanting to see porn and the adult industry have a shift that is reflective of the people that watch it and the people that perform in it. Um, so the collective now coming together of um, Black and Indigenous performers and performers of color, you know, although it's new, it, it just feels like um, kind of like a more organized space for us to reach performers, to reach our fan base, and to, to spread um, the demands that we expect of companies that performers may have to work with. And it's also an opportunity for us to um, take care of each other. So we're working, pulling our talents and our skill sets and our networks together to generate money for our mutual aid fund, which the application went out today for other performers that are, like you mentioned, in uncomfortable situations um, right now and need some financial support. So um, that is a really exciting partnership that we're creating with other performers to take care of Black and Indigenous um, people of color that might be struggling due to COVID or might be struggling because they don't want to work with racist people. Yeah. Um, so that's a new project. We've also been doing remote shoots for a couple mm -hmm. of other companies as well as our own, like kind of redefining the way porn is shot. Mm -hmm. you know? So things being shot over different apps with different people in different places and directors on one side of the country, yeah. performers on the other side of the country, but still putting out quality content um, we're, we're doing lives for, uh, you know, a couple of companies as well mm -hmm. that uh, 
I think I'll hold off on saying until the contract rest of the contracts signed. are signed. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I but, saw I saw y'all were dap y'all are I don't know if y'all are already involved with Playboy. Uh, yeah, I actually wrote a piece for Playboy entitled Sage about us and what we're going through in this in this time of the pandemic and black love pushing through every single generation and every single uh, aspect of how it is, uh, how they are trying to crush it in America and have been trying to crush black love for 500 years. So you could definitely check that writing out in Playboy. Uh, we also, you, know, oh, okay. you, you use like, <laughs> Uh, so, so this is um, this has been a, a passion project for Key and I for some time. And I'm gonna be a little sensitive to the timing of how how to share it, but I think during the pandemic it has sort of sped up um, our desire to not only look for a strategy for us, like we want to be in this industry for the longevity of it, right? Um, and we want to create a safe space for people to age in this industry and diversify our roles and, and bring like some of that, like whatever you do in the vanilla world, like I'm pretty sure we can use some some skill set in, in our industry. So we're working to help develop um, in their longevity in the industry. Um, and so that might look like going from in front of the camera to behind the camera or learning that somebody can play an instrument and hasn't done it naked yet, you know, like things like that. So a um, lot to come with that. We're, we really find a lot of joy in not just cutting, making a lane for us, but also making sure that there is enough space for all of us to travel towards whatever success looks like for, for us on the other end of this. That's so awesome. That's great. I'm excited for you guys. You guys have so much in the works. And I mean, y'all are, y'all are going to go, I mean, you're, do y'all consider yourself mainstream yet? No, I don't, what, what, what constitutes a mainstream? I mean, black people know who we are. I guess every, I guess you're everywhere, but maybe you're not everywhere yet. I don't, you know what it, what, what's interesting about that question? is that I don't know that everywhere that there is to be, we want to be. You know what I mean? You know, like there, because like when I kind of think of like mainstream porn, for example, I, I think of some pretty, um, pretty specific companies that one would work for, right? And those, some companies are on our no list, right? For, because they totally counter the other work that we're doing. Um, we household names, like, Maybe it's hard to tell, right? Because people don't just like walk in the kitchen going like, you know, like, oh. My favorite porn star. Right? <laughs> you know, they, don't, they don't be on it like, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're in a lot of places that people wouldn't expect us to be, but we're in all the places that we should be. And in the next places that we I can't hear. <laughs> that was a tongue twister. We've been in some main, mainstream press though. Yeah, recently yeah. We've, we've uh done Yes, I've seen like the articles y'all been in and like y'all gotten a lot of a good PR. Cosmo, yeah. So, you know, so from that from that perspective, I I, I will say that I feel nice. like our work, yeah, our work is, is getting to the mainstream um, media. And that's really cool because that means that people are starting to normalize conversations around oh, yeah. sex, sexuality, sex work, and things of, of that sort. So, yeah. Yeah, it means you're getting out there. It means you're you're you're, you're blooming. It, it's going. It's going. I like it. And I feel like in this day and age, you don't have to necessarily sign with somebody because you have the control of having and making your own channel. Just like you have your own film, your own you know, your own studio, your own everything. You know, all of it. So you have the chance to have more control. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. sure. And and mm -hmm. you, know, you can build your empire that way. You know that's what I feel that y'all wanna y'all wanna do. And I like that idea. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I saw that you made a mold of your penis, Mr. King. I did. Oh, <laughs> did you, you have it that. with you around there somewhere so they can see it? Of course I do. Of course I do. Uh, so yeah, we in uh 
in conjunction with a very awesome company called Lust Arts. Um, I have been looking and people have been interested in my mold for a long time, but it was important for us to find a company that was ethical, that was uh, not racist, <laughs> that actually make uh, the mold out of something that was environmentally and bodily safe. So now we do have the King Noir dildo. Yeah. You can get it in with me. And you can get a suction cup for the back and fuck me on the wall, <laughs> in the shower. Or somebody else. Yeah, you can right. put it on it and let them get it in. And it's heavy like me, so you can have a good time. And also we got it in like, some really, really dope colorways too. All right. <laughs> On the Dr. Manhattan and shit, you can get it in the back. <laughs> it's really cool because like it can be completely customized. And we're like a lot, a lot of do you know what I mean? Okay, so like you can only talk if you have the dick in your hand. Like that's the talking. Talking it's like the microphone, yeah. So um, so you you can get it in a lot of customized, um customized colors, but Everything is in his likeness. So the weight, right. the vein, all of it. It's all you. <laughs> so super, super exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's really, it's realistic. Appearances during COVID-19. Yeah, As yeah. you're doing like virtual, uh, virtual streaming with, um, with other performers and other fans. Yeah. Okay. My, since I since I'm on um, social distancing, my my uh, mold has been out there hoeing for me it's with no cool. mask. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> I did. Let me see what, what else I got here. I wanted to ask y'all. Let's see. Um, I had I had a question for you. What are what? And this is for Jasmine. What are three things women can do to feel more confident and free when it comes to sex? What are like three most important things to you? Three important things. Oh, okay. So give me a second. Let me kind of take this out of sex for a minute because um, a lot of times like we'll, we'll, we'll dress ourselves up without really considering like internally what's going on. You know, so you know, I can say like, get a toy, right? Buy yourself some sexy lingerie, do some right. dirty things like that. But a, a lot of times, that is not addressing really what's inhibiting you from feeling sexy. You know, right. like, not, I don't know, painting over something that isn't clean. So just, and that's not a great analogy, but I think um, when I work with a lot of women. Ups and ways that they want to present in a sexy way or confident um, has nothing to do with sex. It has to do a lot with how they feel about themselves. About themselves. It has to do with what they determine. Right. And and most of the times, and, and I know this is not answering your you know the three three part um, question, but I, I want to be really thoughtful in, in sharing this to the people that are listening. Before you can like perform sexually for someone else, I think in with yourself, like what is the, what does that mean to you? And if your first like definition of that is what somebody has been selling you as sexy, you're never going to feel sexy, right? So for some women, when I ask them like, what, what makes you feel sexy? It's not like red lipstick or lingerie or crawling on the floor or any of these things. It's like, you know, I, um, completed a, a, a project at work and I feel really badass for it, right? We don't allow people to to right. the definition of sexy. Um, one woman recently on the birth, the breastfeeding nurse-a-thon, she said, every time I'm breastfeeding my baby, like, you can't tell me shit. I'm the sexiest woman alive. It's like, then that that's what it is for you. But we don't often right. see a very diverse uh, look of what sexy, what that definition is like or what sexual confidence um, looks like other than some woman like dressing towards a man like that's not sexual confidence necessarily right. that's for me the way society has determined a woman expresses herself in a way that you know is deemed right. to some man I, the, 
the thing I would suggest defining what sex, uh, sex confidence looks like for you specifically and, and acting that out. And people will say like, oh, well, I'm kind of nerdy and I don't think that that's sexy. Like, trust me, there's some some other, you know, person that is dying for like the sex geek goddess, you know? <laughs> um, so just, again, defining what looks what it looks like, what it feels like and what's natural to you. Okay. Um, do you, have you in the, in the industry because you were you were speaking on racism and being activists and everything um, in the industry itself? What have you experienced discrimination wise, racism wise, just moving up in the industry like y'all have? I've been called the nigga on set before by somebody that I was to be working with. I've been told by other people that I'm not black enough, people that are skin, darker skinned. I've been, what else? Uh, I've been, <laughs> not, I've been asked to be in roles to play the thug or somebody in jail or all kinds of other stereotypical roles I've been only referred to as the big black dick on the set instead of my actual name or my performer name. Uh, I've been expected to play a janitor on one on one uh, with one company where they never had anybody else play a janitor before. Everybody else was like a doctor on it, and I was black male on their site, and they were like, oh, "Okay, well, they need to be the janitor." You know, it's it's that. It's also the fact that, you know, white women uh, maybe for the most part, some still do. But a lot a lot of it kind of started changing recently where white women would charge more to the company if they had to put a black man on set. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right, right. For most jobs, we're only hired for jobs where they're specifically trying to shoot something that's somebody of color, you know? Yeah. Right. And they already have that problem in, in regular movies without taking your clothes off. So I can only imagine in porn, it's it's so much more specific, you know, uh, because, you know, it was predominantly white, I guess, to start with until it wasn't. Yeah, well, you know, people have been racist since before the cameras were rolling. So of course, of course. We're definitely um, dealing with the exact same, um, exact same types of job discrimination and opportunity um, stunts, so to speak. I think um, you know King shared some of those very specific things, but I guess you know when you say things like, uh, "Are we main? You know, have we done mainstream work yet?" I think that in itself, it's like we've shown up in so many different ways as being professional and viable performers and exemplary award-winning <laughs> you know? performers directors yeah, we're not good. we're not hired by these uh mainstream white companies to direct for them even though we won right them out. right Whatever, you know so i i think america was built on racism got rich off of racism and racism still has to be challenged at, at every turn and that's why we're building our own like we don't need to be accepted in their spaces we need to build our own spaces yes sir you definitely can you can do anything you want to do and uh, y'all two are much more than capable of making that happen and it's very obvious so um, I thank you for for being here with me telling everybody and me about all the new things that you have going on and just sharing your success because um, I mean that's all y'all are just gonna keep moving up even in the times that we're in in the you know being scared and and the racism you know you're still moving forward you're still paving the way no matter what and that's what's important 
This is definitely you know, you're gonna keep going. And and um, I bless you guys and, and I wish you well, good vibes and and all of it. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Really thinking about you as well. Definitely. You're welcome, guys. I, I really, really, really thank you guys. And uh, I will continue sharing all your stuff and making sure other people know about your stuff and, and so on and so forth. And I, I appreciate you. Thank all you. Right. Good evening. Can we end it for me, Mr. Oh, they got it. Thank you guys. <clears throat> this is Nick Scorpion Titty Tuesday. That was freaking awesome.